Hey everyone. In this video, I want to explore conditional access filtering and the ability to use templates. I think we're all used to the idea that conditional access is amazing. It's that capability for any authorization that's going through Entra, formerly known as Azure AD, that could be Azure, something in the portal, the PowerShell, the CLI, REST API, it doesn't matter. It could be any federated application. It can be internet access or private access with the new security service edge capabilities with the Entra internet access and Entra private access. And it has these huge set of capabilities that can drive, well, what is it looking at in terms of, is it the user, the target service I'm trying to consume, the risk of the user or the session, the device, what exactly I'm trying to do with session control. So it's amazingly powerful. And I can add different requirements. Maybe it's a strong authentication. Maybe it has to be from a hybrid joint device. The device has to be healthy per Intune or Defender Endpoint. Huge set of capabilities. But what can happen is I end up with so many conditional access policies. I struggle to find, well, where did I do what? And if I'm trying to get started, what are the right settings to use? Now, there's always things like the resultant set, i.e. why do I have a certain set of policies being applied to me? I can do various reporting around these capabilities, but let's just start off with trying to find things. So if I'm trying to find a certain policy that maybe impacts a certain user or targets a certain application, well, here I am, I'm in the entry portal, and as always, we've just kind of gone to the protection. We're looking at conditional access. And then we're going to our policies. And within here, we have the, the old search. So I could search by names. If I've named it well, which hopefully we have, hey, maybe I can find things. Things related to MFA. Well, it's going to go and find those policy names that have MFA in them. But instead, what I can now do is I can go ahead and I can add filters. And what I can do with the add filter is we'll see there's a number of different options. So we'll see things like actor, i.e. the entity I'm applying this to, a user, a group, for example, the target is it an application, and then conditions, and then what I'm granting control, session control, state, is it enabled, disabled, and then various create or modified dates. So if we do actor, for example, well, I can see, yep, it's my target in a user or groups or roles, guests, workload identities. If it's the target, well now, hey, is it an app? Is it a user action? Is it authentication context? My conditions. Now for the conditions, notice we have a choice. By default, it's saying any, but I can flip that switch and it will go to all. So all of these things would have to be utilized. But here, if it's any of, <coughs> hey, um, I'm focusing on, is it the actual sign-in risk? So this specific authorization request, what is the risk of that particular one? Or maybe how I care about ones that are assigning user risk as well. So it could be any of those. And if I apply it, well, then it's gonna start restricting down the policies it shows me to just those. Notice I can easily reset the filters to remove them all, or I could remove a specific filter. So we go ahead and remove that. Grant controls. And once again, it could be any of, or it could be all by flipping that switch. And we see all of those different options that we can use within our group policy. Again, if I flipped it to all, we just see that it's now a filled in toggle. So I can go through and find, hey, well, does it require a certain authentication strength and it requires it to be marked as compliant. And I've got three policies that do that. So it makes it a lot simpler now to quickly go and find, hey, where have I done things that work on risk? Where have I done things based on device health? And I can just go and locate those super, super easily. State, hey, is it on, off, report only? 
So a really nice capability to quickly go and find the various conditional access policies you have gone and created. Okay, so that's great. <clears throat> what about actually creating the policies? If I go and do a new policy, well, as we know, there's a huge amount of options now. Obviously, I can target, is it a particular all users, select users? Is it based on if they're a guest or a certain role? I can target different types of resource, cloud apps, user actions. Obviously, we've got GSA. So GSA is that internet access and private access capability that works with a session control. An authentication context I've created that, again, I could then apply to various maybe types of, of data or service. You have all these conditions that are available to me. And then what are the right grant controls that we can see over here? And then session controls. So all of these different options. I don't know. I'm getting started and it's really not clear to me what are the right things that I should care about. So what we have up here, new policy from template. And if I select that, you'll see they're now broken down into a number of categories. We'll see there's the idea of secure foundation, zero trust, remote work, protect administrator, emerging threats, and all. So I can go and read the description. There's a learn more for each of them. But maybe I'm trying to get into zero trust or, hey, I'm in this new remote work world. And it's giving me guidance on what are some of the key ones I would want to leverage for these various environments. And I could just go and select one. So maybe, yes, I want to block legacy authentication. And I've selected it. I could view it. So here I could just go and easily see, well, what is it going to do? So, okay, I can see it's all users. And what it's basically going to do is for those legacy, the Exchange Active Sync clients, I'm going to block access. So it's just going to deny that. So I can quickly see what exactly it's going to do. I can download a JSON file. But for right now, we can go ahead and say, okay, let's review and create down the bottom. So notice the policy state by default is report only. So that's always the recommendation for any conditional access policy. Don't just turn it on. Maybe I, I need that active sync. And if I just turn this on, I would suddenly block huge amounts of my population. So as always, the best practice with conditional access is apply in report only mode first. Take some time to look at the, what it's actually having an impact on the environment. How many people are impacted? Is there some better user education I can do to prepare them? And then only once I'm confident I'm going to have minimal impact or impact that I can handle, I'm not going to swap my help desk, then I could go and change it to on. And I could just go and hit create. And obviously you can change the name. And once again, once you've created this policy, there it is. And notice it's in that report only mode. And I can go and change it however I want. I can absolutely modify anything. And what it does by default for all of these, notice it's all users, but if I go to exclude, it adds the current user as excluded. So for all of these templates, it automatically adds whoever is creating this as excluded because obviously I can do damage with conditional access. It's a very powerful feature. With that whole great power comes great responsibility. If, for example, I was disabling access to something and it worked too well and I'd made a mistake, maybe I could lock myself out so I can't undo the problem. So by default, it's always going to exclude the person who is creating this from the template. But then if I decided, no, no, I should be included, as long as you're confident of the impact and it's not going to cause you a problem, hey, I could absolutely go and change that. And again, once you are confident that yes, it's doing what it's want. I've looked at what the impact's gonna be on my users. It's not gonna cause me a problem. You would then go ahead and actually change that to on. And then it will do that block. It will actually do it. Because right now it's just reporting. It gives you an idea of what the impact is, but it's not actually protecting you in any way. So I'd wanna go and change that to on. But for me, hey, I'm just gonna go ahead 
And because I'm deleting, it wants me to be extra sure. Um, so it's doing that extra authentication because originally it wasn't the level I require for these type of protected actions. And so now I can go ahead and delete it. So we can see that bit of fun there as well. And so that's really the, the idea around all of this. You can see we walked through both the ability to filter and find the conditional access policies that we're wondering where I'm doing a certain type of activity and then actually creating them from the template. As I talked about before, obviously we have various types of reporting to understand exactly, well, what is happening, but also you have that idea of the what if. So what if is really useful to say, hey, who is applying in what condition, what conditional access policies would actually apply there. So that's always available to you as well. And remember, if you are trying to get an idea of, well, what is the impact of a particular conditional access policy that's in reporting mode, you can also head over to insights and reporting. And then from there, just select the particular policy. So right now it's all enabled policies, but if I scroll down, I can see I can select individual report only policies. So I could select that, hey, block legacy authentication. And then it's gonna show me the impact that I'm having of that policy. So as long as that impact was very low and I could dive in and see who is being impacted, then I could go enable that instead of it just being ported mode. So that was it. Um, conditional access, super powerful. The filtering is great to find where am I doing a certain thing. Now I could always go and look at sign-in logs as well and it would show me the detail of which policy is doing something. I can also now go ahead and use those templates to create policies based on different scenarios for different categories. And of course I can always go and um, see when it's in report only mode, which we always, always start in. We always start in report only mode, see the impact. And then when we're confident, we're not gonna destroy our company, uh, then we can go and flip it to enabled. Always, I hope that was useful. Tonight's video, take care.